In this lesson, we will derive the formulas for factoring a sum or difference of cubes shown below using long division. Let's begin with the sum of cubes formula. What we will do is we'll perform long division and divide a cubed plus b cubed by a plus b. We'll show since the remainder is zero and the quotient is a squared minus ab plus b squared, the product on the right does give us a cubed plus b cubed. We'll divide using long division. Remember, when the dividend has missing terms, we include zero terms, and therefore, we begin by writing a cubed plus b cubed as a cubed plus zero a squared b plus zero a b squared, and then plus b cubed. And we divide by a plus b. Now to begin dividing, we are only concerned about the first term of the divisor and the first term of the dividend. We need to determine what times a is equal to a cubed, or if we need to, we can divide a cubed by a, which gives us a squared, the first term in the quotient. And let's write a squared here. And now we multiply a squared in the divisor. a squared times a is a cubed. And then we have plus a squared times b, which gives us plus a squared b. Notice how this is why we needed the zero term. And now we subtract. Instead of subtracting though, we will add the opposite. So we change this to addition, change the sign, and change the sign. And now we add, which gives us zero, and then negative a squared b. Now we bring down the next term and repeat the process using the first term of the divisor and this term here. We need to determine what times a is equal to negative a squared b, or if we need to, we can divide negative a squared b by a, which gives us negative a b. The next term in the quotient is negative or minus a b. We multiply negative a b in the divisor. Negative a b times a is negative a squared b. Negative a b times b is minus a b squared. And now we subtract by adding the opposite. We have zero and then positive a b squared. Bring down the last term and repeat the process one more time using the a of the divisor and a b squared. We need to determine what times a is equal to a b squared, or we can divide a b squared by a which gives us b squared. b squared is the next term in the quotient. And now we multiply b squared and a plus b. b squared times a is a b squared. b squared times b is b cubed. So plus b cubed. We subtract by adding the opposite. And notice how we do have a remainder of zero. So because the remainder is zero, we know that a plus b is a factor of a cubed plus b cubed. And since the quotient is a squared minus ab plus b squared, we now know that a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared is equal to a cubed plus b cubed, which gives us the sum of cubes factoring formula. And now let's apply this factoring formula. Let's factor x cubed plus 64. x cubed is a perfect cube and so is 64. Since four cubed is equal to 64, if it's helpful, we can write x cubed minus 64 as the cube of x plus the cube of four. In this form, it might be easier to recognize that a is equal to x and b is equal to four, which means x cubed plus 64 in factored form is equal to a binomial factor times a trinomial factor where the binomial is a plus b, which is x plus four. The trinomial factor is a squared, which is x squared, minus a times b, which gives us minus x times four, or minus four x, and then plus b squared. If b is four, b squared is four squared, which is equal to 16. And now let's derive the difference of cubes factoring formula again by performing long division. So let's go ahead and set this up. We have a cubed plus zero a squared b plus zero a b squared 
minus b cubed. We'll divide this by a minus b. We begin by determining what times a is equal to a cubed, which is a squared. Multiplying by the divisor, a squared times a is a cubed. And then we have a squared times negative b, which gives us minus a squared b. Just as before, we subtract by adding the opposite. The sum is a squared b. Bring down the next term. And now we determine what times a is equal to a squared b, which is ab. So we have plus ab in the quotient. Now we multiply by the divisor. ab times a is a squared b. ab times negative b is minus ab squared. Again, we subtract by adding the opposite. When we add, we have positive ab squared. Bring down the last term. Repeat the process one more time. We need to determine what times a is equal to ab squared. a times b squared is equal to ab squared. So we have plus b squared in the quotient. Multiplying by the divisor, b squared times a is ab squared. And b squared times negative b gives us minus b cubed. And subtracting by adding the opposite once again, we have a remainder of zero. So because the remainder is zero, we know a minus b is a factor of a cubed minus b cubed. And since the quotient is a squared plus ab plus b squared, we now know a minus b times the quantity a squared plus ab plus b squared must equal a cubed minus b cubed, verifying the factoring formula. And let's finish by looking at an example. Let's factor 8x cubed minus 27. Notice we do have a difference of cubes because 8x cubed is equal to the cube of 2x and 27 is equal to the cube of 3, which means for our factoring formula, a is equal to 2x and b is equal to 3, which means 8x cubed minus 27 in factored form will be a binomial times a trinomial where the binomial is a minus b, which is 2x minus 3. And the trinomial is a squared. If a is equal to 2x, a squared is equal to the square of 2x, which is equal to 4x squared, since 2x times 2x is 4x squared. And then we have plus a times b, which gives us plus 2x times 3, or plus 6x. And then plus b squared, if b is 3, 3 squared is 9. I hope you found this helpful.